everyone, welcome back to Wild Ginger Hand Weaving, where today I will be showing you how to make a Damascus edge. This is a very neat edge for your weft faced weaving projects, including mug rugs. It's a great balance of something that's easy, fast, secure, and attractive. There is a front and a back to this finish, so we are going to be starting by working on the back from right to left, and then we'll flip it over and work the front again from right to left. And at that point, it will be secure as is and will lie flat. After that, you can further finish it by trimming the fringe to that length, by twisting the fringe, or by braiding it. And we'll be discussing all of these techniques. So let's get started. At this point, I've flipped over my mug rug to the back to start working on it, but before I do that, let me introduce you to a few tools you might need to have on hand. First of all is a wide-toothed comb. This is very handy for if your threads get into a tangle, you can very quickly straighten them all out again. You will also want to have a heavy weight of some sort. I like to use an antique iron, and I simply place that on top of my rug higher up there to keep it nice and secure so it won't go anywhere as I'm working on it. Also, I'll need something with a blunt tip like a knitting needle or a smooth chopstick, which can be handy for sorting out the threads, but also more importantly for easing out this weft protector. This is just a few picks of yarn that I wove in there to make sure that the weft would stay put and not go anywhere um, when I cut it off the loom. And I will want to keep it in there while I'm working, but just let it out a few strands at a time so these warp ends are free to work on. The blunt tipped needle like this is very handy because you can manipulate things very gently without getting anything else out of place. You may also want to have something like a clothespin or a sewing clip, which you can put into the piece a little bit ahead of where you're working to make sure that nothing will unravel past that point. You can start to take out the threads on this side of the clip, but you won't have to worry about the rest of it unraveling. And finally, you'll want something like a pair of scissors to trim the fringe once you're all completely done. Okay, let's get started actually tying this thing. We're going to take that weft protector out a few threads at a time. I'm gonna unclip this today just so you can see what's going on a little bit better. Now I'm going to be using two threads at a time. Again, I'm starting on the right and working my way left. So this is my first warp end and this is my second. I'm going to hold the second taut, put the first one over it, and then pull that end up through the loop that I've created. It will look like that at this stage. I'm going to continue pulling the second one taut, and then I'll cinch the first strand up tight against the weft threads. This strand is now done, and I'm going to repeat that same process with the second two threads. I'll hold thread number three taut, number two goes over and up through that loop, and cinch it tight up against the weft. I'm going to continue that process all the way across. When I cinch the thread up against the weft, I'm not pulling it straight up. I'm pulling it more at a 45 degree angle. I've found that that gives the neatest row of knots up against the weft. As I said, I'm just going to continue that all the way across. And if things get tight with my weft protector blocking the way, I will continue to let out a little bit more and pull those new warp ends out.
At this point, I have taken out my weft projector entirely, and if I had taken it out earlier, what might have happened is this final blue weft pick would have drawn in, making these last three threads a tangled mess. This is more likely to happen with some weave structures than others. In this project today, my weft was very tightly packed, so it really wasn't going anywhere. But you always want to be careful just in case it's going to do something you don't want. Now at the end here, I'm going to finish these two just like all the rest. And then with my last thread, there's nothing to hitch around. So that is just done at this point, right like it is now. Now you'll see that this fringe up here, which I've just discarded up, can be brought down, but it does not want to lie flat. It has a bit of a curl to it, and it's really a directional finish here. It wants to flip up this way. We are going to correct that now by flipping the whole piece over. And we're going to go through exactly the same process on the front, which will correct that curl and make it lie flat. At this point, this half finish where I've gone across just the back is called a half Damascus. And you might actually want to stop here if you want to eliminate the fringe entirely take each of the ends and weave it up through the work with a tapestry needle. So this could be a stopping point, but not if you want fringe. So now we're going to finish the full Damascus. Again, we're taking the first two here, we're putting the first thread over the second, and pulling it up through that loop. It can be a little bit tricky to get this first knot to lie where it should, but after that the process will go very smoothly, perhaps even more smoothly than it did on the back, because now we have a nice firm ridge of knots to cinch up against. Again, at this point, we've reached the end and there's nothing more for this final strand to hitch around, so we are done at this point. Now I've continued to flip those th threads up, but this side is very different. When I pull them down after having completed the front and back, these actually want to lie just perfectly flat. We have our completed edge. Before I call it done though, I'm going to do a little bit of tugging. I'm going to grab a few warp threads at the edge and just give it a good tug. This does a great job of squaring up those corners so we don't have any draw in. Then I'm going to tug everything just a little bit to make sure these ends are all coming straight out. And there we have a completed Damascus edge. Now at this point, all of the knots are complete, so this is a secure edge. It will not unravel, so I could simply take scissors and trim it to whatever length I desire. That is definitely the quickest and easiest way to finish this off for good. But if you prefer the look of longer fringe, like tassels, then you can divide this into bundles and start braiding or twisting. I've got 33 warp ends here, which is conveniently divisible by three, so if I want to braid my fringe, I can simply start braiding away, and when it gets to the length that I like, then I can finish it with a knot and trim it to finish. Now, one good reason to leave your fringe nice and long, longer than it looks like you need, is so that you can tie this knot at the end. 
you will end up trimming off quite a bit, maybe up to almost an inch here when all's said and done. But that is not wasted yarn as much as it feels like. You really need that extra length so it doesn't give you headaches while you're finishing the fringe here. Now that knot that I tied, I'm leaving it pretty loose at this point. So then when I've tied all of my fringe in loose knots, I'll be able to go back and adjust and cinch them all to the same length. It's much easier to do that if you leave the knots loose at this point. So that's a braided fringe, but we could also twist it. I like the thickness of three strands, so even though you only need two for twisting, I am going to take another bundle of three and simply split that middle warp end in half so that I have two strands to work with. There is actually a tool for twisting the fringe, which you could use, but I find it cumbersome when I'm working at this small scale, and it's actually quicker and easier for me to do it by hand. So I'm going to take these two bundles in between my thumb and my pointer finger, and I'm going to have them between the same fingers, but make sure that they are separated there. Taking all together, I'm going to twist in the same direction. I'm starting out by twisting to the right, and I'm going to pass them off one hand to the other in between my thumb and my forefinger, each time giving it another twist to the right. Once it's fairly twisted and starts to kink up, at that point, you can pinch all of those together and start twisting in the opposite direction, in this case, to the left. There I have a twisted fringe, which again, you'll need to secure with a knot to make sure it doesn't unravel. You can see that I'm using all of that length to tie that loose knot, and it would be very hard with less length. All right, so those are my two methods of making a quick and easy fringe by braiding or twisting. So thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments down below if you plan to try out this technique or if you have any questions or any tips or tricks of your own to share. Like and subscribe to get more weaving patterns and tutorials like this one, and I hope to see you in the next video.